Yeah, g'day everyone. Uh, so after my first YouTube post, uh, a lot of comments uh, asking for an update on how the camper gets set up and some of the uh, some of the additions to it and modifications. So finally, I got to the point where I can show you all. So here we go. Yeah, so here's a, a walk around the camper. At the moment, it's all closed up uh, and ready for transit. Um, so I guess the first part is to show you the pop top section. So I'll put the camera down and go and pop it up for you. So here we go, I'm gonna show you the pop top section where we sleep. So there we go, pretty much as simple as uh, two clips and popping it up and just pulling the canvas over to assist with any rain and dirt um, coming in from the sides. Um, I'll grab the camera. So one of the uh, big debates we had in building was how to access the camper and uh, this is where a stepladder came in handy. So I'll just go and place that. So at the moment we just use an aluminium step ladder to get up. So it's a bit agricultural but it serves the purpose at the moment and we've got a bit of standing room on the rear draw bar as well. I have planned a little ladder system to get up there but it's just uh, hasn't made this cut. But anyway we'll have a quick look inside. So this is uh, obviously inside with the uh, the canvas window down. Big windows there to give a lot of air in the summer. Same on the other side. Uh, and it's simply just a uh, just the shell at the moment. The mattress has been removed uh, for storage, but um, basically we can fit 150 mil king size Australian mattress inside this area. So yeah. It, uh, it fits about three people if needed. We've got two small children, so they tend to tuck up in here with one of the parents or uh, or we put them down in a swag and and uh, both parents get to sleep up here. Yeah, I forgot to mention the uh, the awning that comes out up top there, which is um, basically a shelter that comes out with uh, two or three poles. Uh, I'm not going to show you that today, but it um, it comes out so the shelter when you are trying to exit the van in the morning if it's raining, and uh, something to get dressed under as well. So, okay, so now we move into the uh, the right hand side, or which is the driver's side in Australia, which we call which is our storage area. So. Just make this lift up. So they're on gas struts that need to be adjusted a little bit so I don't hit my head. But but um, this is the offside part of the van. So I'll try and get in here with this shadow and this lighting to show you a bit better. So pretty much up the front, we have our electric system and, and storage up the top there. Fits small things like tarps and hoses and and uh, other parts. Um, more storage as we get towards the back here and then uh, the main part of the storage here which is a huge amount of storage. Um, we, we can never usually fill it so but yeah so this is the electrical part of the trailer it's uh, it's pretty simple um, starting at the very top there it was just a panel that um, really tells us um, how much voltage there is and, and a master switch just there I just turned on uh, and uh, two 12 volt cigarette plug and, uh, and a couple of USBs pretty standard panel 
buy off eBay. Uh, master switch there that turns everything on. Um, moving over here to the control panel, pretty simple. All the electrical stuff comes from um, comes or feeds into this uh, fuse panel, just so we can obviously give it a fuse, and uh, it's fed from the main battery. And then, uh, and the other blue bit of kit is the Victron Energy uh, Charge Controller, 30 amp. Um, it's a bit of a beast. It's uh, it's been amazing. Um, the two solar panels, 290 watt solar panels, which is two of on the roof, feed this uh, charge controller. And uh, and uh, we just came away from a six day trip, and uh, I've not had to I've not had to externally charge the batteries at all. I've got two 150 amp. AGM batteries in the bottom, which I'll show you in a separate clip. Uh, they're underneath the main floor of this storage area. Uh, so I'll show you all the services underneath, but they all connect up here, electrical-wise. Uh, I did plan to put in a, a DC charger to uh, charge the batteries from the main vehicle as we're travelling, but found that the two solar panels and the uh, and this charge controller were uh, charging the uh, charging the batteries enough to not have to put one of those in so I did have one installed with those holes there but it's since been removed and uh, used elsewhere on another project so I have some spare holes unfortunately. So moving slightly towards the front of the trailer uh, just underneath here is a hatch simply to make a tunnel boot uh, in there is long poles and uh, any bits of kit like chairs and fishing rods go in there uh, and then on this side we've got slide out 60 litre, uh, sorry, yeah, 80 litre angle fridge. So that slides out on its own and uh, access all the cool drinks from this side of the vehicle. It works really well. So that's that side with the slide out drawer. Moving around the front of the camper, we've got the drawbar. Put an extended drawbar on it, two meters, which makes makes it easy to put um, a big toolbox on the front and gas bottles and jerry holders <laughs> and a storage box on the front holds plenty of uh, plenty of extra spare equipment. Again, some tarps and the uh, and the chocks, hoses, pegs axes and uh, the other day we had it full of firewood so it was handy for that to carry. Uh, put a, an off-road hitch on the front, hitch master, handbrake, solid jockey wheel and uh, it also put some um, stabilizing legs at each corner, there's four of those under each corner to stabilize the van when we set it up. Moving further around the vehicle again, we've got the reciprocal hatch to make the tunnel storage area. So you can see that goes through to the other side, the long items. And, uh, and this side is really where the kitchen starts. So I'll uh, have to unlock that and show you a little bit later. Moving on to the kitchen. Uh, had a bit of an issue with the kitchen bench and had to put in two extra latches in, as you can see. So those two middle latches have become obsolete unfortunately but uh, I'll get rid of them one day but this is the other side the kitchen side opened up there's not a lot in the kitchen at the moment but I can uh, give you the basics so stand back a bit first to get the overall view the kitchen try not to get too much sun in that picture but uh, we're starting off we've got an upright Waco fridge it's about 100 litres I think um, really handy to have such space in a, in a fridge on this side of the van and that really holds all our food and um, whereas the angle on the other side can be a freezer and but also hold all the all the drinks we take so that's the upright fridge it's secured in uh, we've got a sink permanent sink on the bench top moving over Got the, uh, the two burner stove that was installed into the bench top, so it's damn handy for having instant gas. And had a 
plumber, gas plumber, come and install the gas lines to the gas bottles on the front. So that was a pretty simple job for him. And the rest of this kitchen is really just storage for food. Pots, pans, cups, bowls, spoons, and the whole lot. Um, we managed to get some lighting in here. It's a bit agricultural. I haven't put the ceiling in yet, so the exposed wires, but but these things are, are pretty handy for uh, either night time or full. full uh, put two of those in. Highly recommend those if you're uh, shopping around. And again, a similar panel than you've seen before. Just to keep an eye on the batteries. So that's the storage. Uh, underneath the sink I've got another hatch, but that's really only to access the sink um, if there's any problems with the plumbing. So moving this part to the kitchen really is this uh, this slide out drawer here, which is a uh, good old Aussie barbecue. And in this case, we've uh, chosen my old Weber, which has uh, seen better days, but in short, that gets slided out to sit just right near the kitchen and the fridge and the sink in order to go and uh, cook up whatever we want. Uh, retrofitted a, uh, a hose to it that comes basically out and around and uh, fits into this reciprocal gas bayonet. So it gets plumbed in and we have gas straight to the barbecue, simple as that. So there's also hard plumbing sitting behind behind that bayonet. Gas bottle on, barbecue on. The bench top I made is a little bit agricultural, but that was in a bit of a hurry. Uh, definitely could have done a better job of that, but still functional in that. So we have our knives and forks and, and other utensils underneath. There, barbecue secure on top. Does it move? So a lot of people ask where we've got the water tanks and the water pump and the batteries and so forth. So just underneath um, underneath our storage area, we can access that pretty easily to adjust any anything we need to in the pump. So um, yeah, I'll uh, I'll uh, I'll take this off completely and then come and show you. Okay, so now we've removed that, I can show you all the services underneath, but I guess before I do that, one of the small modifications I've uh, tried to play with, but hasn't got a permanent solution, is how to access the water tanks when all my gear's on top of the uh, the board that was there. And one of the things we came up with was a, um, a board that sort of came up here. So that can be lifted up, and I can access the breather valve, which gets on and off, depending on if we're filling up water, and the main filler valve. There, the black line and the orange. So that's um, that's how we uh, we fill the water tanks with uh, with access to the outside typical water filler from most caravans. I guess the other thing that was done as well, if I just remove that slightly, because can, is the is the fast fill, and that's um, that's just attached to the uh, the suction lines. We just put a tee piece inside the suction lines from the water pump, and uh, and it fills backwards through those suction line so just force fed makes life pretty simple when you pull up and you've got pressurized water so that's that end let's peel that back so we can get a good look so underneath in short we've got three 85 litre water tanks so plenty of water storage uh, all interconnected with a suction line and a filling line so the suction line is the blue line and the black line is the filler line. So that works really well. Uh, and then we've got the breather line, which is the clear line. The breather line goes over to the top of each of the tanks under there to, for breathing back to the filler. It's the breather line there. So that's the water tank um, connected to that. So I said the blue line, oh, and each, each tank can be adjusted so that or isolated so that you can suck from only one tank at a time. All three tanks have, have that feature. 
so that's pretty handy as well so you know how much water I don't have a water gauge on here I just know when I run out of the first tank the second tank and the third tank gives me a pretty good guide as to how much water I've got left and then we've got the water pump uh, the sea flow it's been amazing it's very quiet uh, it's a marine grade I highly recommend one of these uh, I'm not sure of the specs there there we go 11.6 liters per minute which is actually a fair bit uh, 12 volt pump so with the filter so that's the um, that sucks this is the suction side here from the water tanks through water filter and then this is the discharge side so heads off in a couple of directions one that direction there is to the sink on the other side and this one here is to the portable shower which I'll show you a little bit later on goes up and up to the portable shower on the outside so that's the cold water line we uh, haven't plumbed for hot water yet but I've got a line and a spare line here ready to go for when a hot water service arrives moving over to the battery system in short like I said earlier two 150 amp AGM slimline batteries sitting on their side so that's okay these uh, these guys are designed to sit on their side so that's just bracketed in there uh, and basically the positive and the negative feed through a master fuse 40 amp fuse then the main line which comes out that side of the fuse runs all the way up to feed straight into the switchboard and that's how I get all my power from the positive side of that switchboard so that's uh, in short that's the power system that's the water system and all the under services system so on the outside looking up onto the roof which we haven't seen yet too too much is the two solar panels really mounted to the uh, the outside there 290 watt panels each which is a huge amount of solar for a trailer this size feeding the charge controller we've seen earlier and the two 150 amp AGM batteries so they keep them topped up nicely and when there's any level of sun about they um, they convert that into a good charge so really really happy with those um, they're, they're not designed they are basically household uh, panels so for household roof solar systems so so there you go everyone I hope you enjoyed that uh, that camper update with all the modifications and the services uh, drop a line in the comment section if you want to know any more info cheers team